All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for checking the video out today. We have more PlayStation news, rumors, and leaks to go over and cover here today. So before we dive into it, do me a big favor. If you end up enjoying the video or finding it informative, be sure to leave it a like. And if you are new here to the channel, consider hitting that subscribe button as well. We're starting here talking a little bit about the Callisto Protocol because it's been revealed how long it's going to take to complete this game. So reading from PlayStation Lifestyle, it says Striking Distance Studios boss Glenn Schofield has shed some light on the Callisto Protocol length, revealing that it'll last around 12 to 14 hours for most players. However, there will be several different paths for players to take, adding replay value to the game. And of course, there will be a little bit of exploration as well. So if you really want to go beyond 14 hours, there will be enough material to help you prolong your experience. So I wanted to just briefly mention this because, you know, we just talked recently about God of War Ragnarok and its length. And now we're looking at the Callisto Protocol. This is another game I've seen many of you express excitement for. Talk about how, you know, you just can't wait to get your hands on this when it releases in December. And we really just don't get too many AAA single player survival horror experiences, although they do seem like they're coming back, which is awesome. And so, yeah, 12 to 14 hours to me, that sounds pretty good. So let me know your thoughts about that. Next up, we're talking once again about Silent Hill as we have the director of the upcoming Silent Hill film pretty much confirming all of the rumors or most of the rumors that we've been hearing. Reading from Gaming Bolt that says the Silent Hill series is no stranger to rumors these days, especially with images for Bloober Team's Silent Hill 2 remake and the Sakura teaser leaking. There's also Silent Hill The Short Message, which was recently rated in South Korea. Amid all of this, film director Christoph Gans has confirmed that there are indeed several games in development. Gans is known for directing the first Silent Hill and is working on the reboot. Speaking to the French website Movie and Game Translation via Reset Era, he reportedly said, I know a bit about the next Silent Hill game. I work with the Silent Team, the original creators. I work in collaboration with Konami. I'm working with the Silent Team, the original creators, at Konami, there are several games in development as we speak. There are several teams on it with a big line of games. They will revive the franchise. I think they were impressed by the success of the remakes of Resident Evil, which are evidently exceptional games. I'm not working directly on the games, but I'm working with Konami, not with Kojima though, but with the silent team who I met with when I filmed the first Silent Hill movie, and they're still here. Gans confirmed that Blooper Team were working on the remake of Silent Hill 2 when asked about the other games. He iterated that there are several teams and that Konami is involved. The fact that the original Team Silent is playing a part is also good news. So what we're pretty much looking at is the director of the upcoming Silent Hill movie validating most of the rumors that we've been hearing lately, which honestly I don't know many people care too much because there's been so much evidence piling up that it's clear that most of these rumors that we've been getting lately are true but it is nice to kind of have that confirmation i think at this point people are just ready for the reveals and to actually see these games now the one thing i want to mention here before moving on though that i find pretty interesting is his quote when he mentions kojima he says quote i'm not working directly on the game but i'm working with konami not with kojima though but with the silent team now that to me can be taken maybe two different ways the first is him just acknowledging that there have been rumors of kojima working on silent hill and his this is his way of saying that kojima is not involved with silent hill or this is his way of basically saying that there are multiple teams working on it kojima productions is one of those teams and he's not working with kojima productions he's working with the silent team so again it can be interpreted i think a few different ways and I'm just going to leave it as it is. I'm not going to say which way I'm taking it because I don't think it matters. We're going to find out eventually what Kojima's working on. And, you know, it's hard to say if it's Silent Hill or not. You know, people are leaning towards Death Stranding 2, and there's a lot of evidence to suggest that. So we'll see. But I just figured I would point this out and let you guys know. Moving on from that, we're talking about how you can now link your PSN and Steam accounts with Marvel's Spider Man. And this is the first game to actually introduce this feature. From PlayStation Universe, they say following months of speculation, it has now been confirmed that gamers can link their PlayStation Network and Steam accounts to unlock in-game bonuses. The first game to allow this is Marvel's Spider-Man, which introduces the PSN and Steam account links today via a new update. The ability to link accounts was previously hinted at multiple times, but it wasn't made official until today. To celebrate the launch of the feature, Sony has launched a new section on the PlayStation website that allows you to connect your PSN to your Steam accounts. 
and it says link your Steam accounts to PlayStation Network to receive unlocks in this and other PlayStation Studios games. You will also receive the latest news, updates, and offers from PlayStation Studios games on PC or PlayStation platforms. Register by creating a Sony account for PlayStation Network or by signing in with your existing Sony account and password. For new accounts, you may opt in for email and console messages when creating your account for existing accounts. Opt in for messages via the notifications tab in your account settings. And so, yeah, you will be getting some extra little bonuses uh, for some PlayStation Studio titles on PC if you choose to link your accounts. So, yeah, I'm not sure how many of you guys uh, play these PlayStation games on PC or are planning to. If so, let me know if you're planning on linking your account. Moving on, we have a rumor for a pretty big VR title that is apparently going to be making its way to PSVR 2. Coming from Push Square, they say if there's any game Sony needs to get over uh, for PSVR 2, it's Half-Life Alex. The critically acclaimed first-person shooter is comfortably regarded as one of the best virtual reality experiences available today. And with the Japanese giant looking to offer more substantial full-length experiences on its new hardware, it simply has to get the game ported. Valve, without confirming anything, has expressed interest in the past, and the rumors simply won't go away. Now a website named The Leak claims that the PlayStation maker has struck a deal uh, that will bring the title to PSVR 2 next year. Unfortunately, the reports are uh, kind of light on specifics, and they say, quote, Our source has told us that Sony were in negotiations with Valve about Half-Life Alex for a long time before reaching a settlement, end quote. And so this is kind of where we're at with the rumor regarding Half-Life Alex and I don't know how reputable this website is. This is the first time I'm hearing of them, the leak. So I definitely recommend taking this with a pinch of salt, but it is true that we've been hearing some rumblings for a little while now that this is something Sony's been working on. And if you think about it, it does make a ton of sense for Sony to pursue this somewhat aggressively because this would be a bigger title to have available uh, on PSVR 2. So I'm gonna say that I do believe it and I am anticipating that this is going to be an announcement at some point for PSVR 2, but again, we still have to take this with a pinch of salt. So let me know whether or not you are expecting this to happen and if you're kind of believing what's being said here or if you're skeptical of it. Moving on, we are talking once again about the uh, Activision Blizzard situation. We have a small update here, but probably a significant one, I would say. It says, reading from PlayStation Universe, that Sony's PlayStation business can still compete with the Call of Duty franchise if it became exclusive to Microsoft consoles, according to the Administrative Council for Economic Defense for Brazil. Microsoft's planned acquisition of Activision Blizzard was approved by Brazil's competition watchdog yesterday with no restrictions. However, it seems to imply that Sony has little grounds to complain due to the fact exclusivity has played a major part in the success of the PlayStation brand. So this is what they said. Investment in exclusive content is and always has been very important for the competitive dynamics in the console segment. Exclusive content was most likely one of the main factors responsible for positioning the PlayStation as a leader in the world console market for more than two decades, a leadership that continues to this day. Furthermore, it believes that Sony can still compete much like Nintendo has without Call of Duty as the Switch doesn't have any of the installments of the FPS shooter franchise available on it. So they also said, with the acquisition of a publisher such as Activision Blizzard and considering the theoretical risk of the company's content becoming exclusive to Xbox, it is likely that the eventual conclusion of the transaction will give Microsoft a considerable competitive advantage in the console sector. Even so, K does not see that such an advantage represents a risk of closing this market for current competitors. As is already seen, Nintendo does not currently rely on any content from Activision Blizzard to compete in the market. So I thought this was important to highlight because we did see how much pushback Jim Ryan and Sony got kind of coming out here and it was revealed publicly that Sony was taking the stance where it can't allow Call of Duty to go exclusive, Microsoft will make things anti-competitive and you know Sony just making it clear how much they rely on it and I've discussed before how it is Jim Ryan's job to try to prevent this or make it as difficult as possible or buy Sony as much time as they can. But still, as a PlayStation fan, uh, it is getting a little bit tired. In fact, it's getting really tired at this point. And I'm hoping that with the Brazilian 
uh, competition watchdog kind of pushing back against Sony here and making it clear that we don't see any problem. I hope that this makes it so Sony just kind of stops talking about it in this way and instead just accepts that this is going to go through and there's still no guarantee that Microsoft will make Call of Duty exclusive, but Sony has plenty of time to prepare for that. And I've said it before, I'll say it again. I think Sony should just double down on focusing on continuing to diversify, make their own FPS. I'm not saying it could ever achieve the same heights as something like Call of Duty, but I just don't like this idea that Sony is basically acting like they can't compete uh, with a franchise like Call of Duty. Like, I mean, you're Sony, you're PlayStation, you're a force here. I think if you really put something behind it, you could create a great first person shooter franchise. I, I just don't see how they couldn't do that. Uh, again, I'm not saying it would be as big as Call of Duty or as successful, but still, uh, they can do this. They have the ability to do it. And, you know, we'll see if that's what they end up doing. But this is what the uh, Brazilian watchdog had to say in response to Sony. So let me know your thoughts about that. Moving on from that, though, we have some great news for PlayStation, some great news for God of War Ragnarok that I'm excited to share with you. Santa Monica Studio took to Twitter yesterday and they said, we are thrilled to announce that God of War Ragnarok has gone gold on behalf of Santa Monica Studio and all of our partners. Thank you to the fans for supporting us over the course of development. We're almost to launch and can't wait for you to play on November 9th. And this is a really big deal because God of War Ragnarok is a massive game. And believe it or not, there still was at least a little bit of fear that because it still hasn't announced, been announced that it's gone gold, some people were wondering if it could end up getting pushed back, even if it's just by a couple of weeks. And so the game is locked in for its November 9th launch. So if you are by chance somebody who had any fear that anything could happen between now and then, uh, you don't have to worry. This game is good to go. And it's pretty clear that the team is really happy about this. And you just see uh, all these developers kind of coming out and talking about how, um, you know, how much they put into this game and just how how big of a deal it is for them that it's finally gone gold and, and they're just really excited for us to play it. And so I actually want to go over here to uh, Estelle Tagani, who is the cinematics producer on God of War Ragnarok, because she put out a tweet that I just thought was worth sharing. It got me hyped. She said, you really haven't seen anything yet in that God of War Ragnarok trailer. And I'm assuming she's referring to the last trailer that we just got at the state of play. She continues by saying, remember when Sony Santa Monica hid the Blades of Chaos until halfway through the game and we all lost our minds at this scene? And she shows a little clip of the scene. Even when gameplay is in a trailer, not all will be revealed before launch. Now, obviously, we know that there's more than what we're seeing in these trailers, but this just gets me really excited because she's essentially alluding to some big moments that are on the same level as when we saw Kratos kind of go back to retrieve the Blades of Chaos because for a lot of PlayStation fans and for a lot of God of War fans, that was like just an insane moment for them. And it's exciting, man. You know, it's hard not to be super excited for this game when you read something like that. But the final thing I want to let you know about, and this was actually kind of surprising to me, is apparently Blue Point Games actually assisted on God of War Ragnarok. Reading from Push Square, they say Sony Santa Monica brought in the cavalry to help complete God of War Ragnarok, which has now officially gone gold on PS5 and PS4. While outsourcing is relatively commonplace among AAA tentpole titles, a graphic showing all the teams that contributed to this project, it's the first time we've seen Blue Point Games associated with the project. The Austin-based studio, officially acquired by PlayStation late last year, is perhaps best known for its remake work on titles like Demon's Souls and Shadow of the Colossus, but it actually has a pretty long-standing association with the God of War series, having ported the original PS2 games to the PS3 with the God of War collection back in the day. While you may be surprised to see so many teams attached to one game, this is normal now. It takes thousands of employees to bring one major title to life these days and many millions of dollars. A lot of these support studios will have helped create art assets, animations and other details with sony santa monica of course leading the production so yeah this was something that i thought was worth highlighting as well because i mean blue point games is an extremely talented 
team. And so to hear that they've contributed to uh, help God of War Ragnarok get to where it needed to be, that's pretty exciting to me. And, you know, obviously there are a lot of people across all different teams that have come together to work on this and make sure that, you know, come launch day on November 9th, fans are going to be hopefully more than satisfied. So there you go. Some amazing news for God of War Ragnarok. At this point, we are just counting down the days until launch. And at this point, it's pretty much just a month out. So let me know your thoughts about this, guys. That does it for the video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it informative. Again, if you did, leave it a like, subscribe if you're new, hit the bell notification icon, and feel free to share the video out on top of all that. But until next time, guys, take care.